Uh, how are you today? Okay. I'm good. Um, well, I, I just have a few questions. I'd like to ask you about your yeah, query. Hold on just one minute. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Uh, how much time do we have? What's that? How much time do we have? Well, uh, keep talking. We'll we'll uh, we'll do the best we can. Okay. Uh, well, as you know, John Lee died a few weeks ago. I understand that you worked with him at Columbia Pictures yes. in the 40s. Right. Um, what exactly did you do there? I was just a sketch artist. A uh, sketch artist. I met Mr. Lee through friends, and uh -huh. he uh, very graciously. Uh, Gave me a job. I think he took pity on me as a young kid, <laughs> pretty young at the time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I got, I had access to uh, working with him at the uh, Columbia Pictures. Uh -huh. I just, just uh, did uh, follow, follow up work with him, uh, sketches. And he would give me his designs, and then I would just elaborate on the, on the sketching. I didn't do any designing or anything like that. Mm -hmm. you know. But anyway, I learned from him and at the studio and uh, what was happening and so forth and so on. And uh, he became you know, a very, very good friend of mine eventually and uh, was the one who started me off with the idea of going into business and helped me start. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere that he showed your sketches to Russell and Russell. Yeah, that was through Mr. Louis, uh, mm -hmm. who uh, she obviously had him do a film right. roles and uh, since he was uh, exclusive with Columbia Pictures, he wasn't allowed to do any stars that were not at the Columbia Pictures. That's oh. how Miss Russell, uh, her husband, and she had, uh, had started their own uh, production company. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, she wanted Jean to design the clothes because uh, she, uh, she was on the uh, admiring of his work. But unfortunately, he couldn't fulfill her wishes because of, uh, you know, the uh, very strict rules. Uh, and, uh, he just went full fight, you know. And, uh, she understood that, but wasn't very happy about it. So he recommended me to her, and she said, oh, no, 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 no. She says, I, you know, I, I don't know the young man, and uh, I need someone of your caliber, you know, experience, and so forth and so on. But he insisted, he said, look, look, he says, why don't you look at his work, his sketches, and, and uh, see, see what he's all about. And uh, she kept saying no, and then finally she relented. And so he said, look, I'll tell you what, I'll make some sketches, and he'll make some sketches, and we'll mix them all together, and you know who is who, and we'll all be, you know, drawn by one person. Uh -huh. And uh, so one evening we went to her home and uh, uh, they gave me a script and uh, you know, vice versa, John, I mean, he was just doing this as a, uh, as a thing to, uh, to help out. Mm -hmm. And so we had dinner and she looked at the sketches and she picked out you know, things that she liked. And uh, so she said, you see, there." Obviously, they're all yours, John. So when it came <laughs> to analyzing the sketches, uh, I think it was eight, eight out of ten were mine. Oh, wow. So, uh, <laughs> so I mean, she couldn't get over it, so when we laughed. So <laughs> anyway, so she decided to take a chance on me. And uh, Jean uh, uh, said, look, I'll, uh, I'll kind of watch him and see that he's, he does things right for you, what have you. And he would come into my, uh, my little workroom at that time. That was just a little uh, small uh, working space. And uh, he didn't do the designing, but he was there mm -hmm. to give me moral support and also to make Miss Russell feel good, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's how, uh, how I got to know Ross. And then, we, of course, eventually we became very good friends, and I did quite a few things for her. Oh, that's great. Uh, until she died. And also uh, a Broadway play for her husband. And, uh, so a couple of films for her, yeah. Oh, so you did more than that I, one? I did, yes. I did two two films. I know about Never Wave It a Whack. What was, what was the other one? Yeah. And then there was another one, uh, which was a 
black company called Dad for Dad. Huh. And Arthur Compton, the uh, successful Broadway play, and the film, unfortunately, was not very successful. Uh -huh. I think it was fun doing it. Uh, and it was well produced as far as all the amenities and so on. So. Huh. I'll look for that. Um, let's see, and you've also addressed Loretta Young? I'm sorry? You've also addressed Loretta Young? Oh, I've done things for her in the past, yes. Uh -huh. Was that odd dressing her since she was married to Jean Louis? Was that? Was that a little strange to dress her since no, she no, was? It was before, before. Oh, it was before. Before when she was doing her television. Oh, uh huh. And let's see. You're also known for dressing Mrs. Ronald Reagan. What is your view on the style of our current first lady? Who? Uh, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Mrs. Clinton? Yeah. You've dressed, you're have you known for dressing Mrs. Ronald well, Reagan. I, I did both the inaugural gowns for Mrs. Reagan right. and also both the inaugural gowns when uh, Mr. Reagan was the uh, governor of, uh, of California. Mm -hmm. And of course, then I, I've had a long, long history with uh, Nancy. I mean, I knew uh, I used to sell her clothes retail in uh, Beverly Hills mm -hmm. when she was a movie star before she became the uh, First Lady. So we would go back quite some time. And mm -hmm. Mrs. Clinton, I don't know. I've met her a few times, but uh, I've not met her close at all. Mm -hmm. um, and you met Balenciaga when you were young? No. No. No, no never have. Oh. I think somebody quoted that. That was, yeah. that, that was just an error. Oh. <laughs> no, I was, I was uh, in awe of him. Uh -huh. I, I wanted to to meet him. In fact, I wanted to work in his uh, I in uh, Paris. I never got to, to meet him, unfortunately. And uh, I actually did work with uh, different, the French at your house. Uh -huh. That's true. My, my basic training. Uh -huh. And uh, you, did you ever meet Charles James? Oh, yes, yes. In fact, we won an award together at the, uh, in New York uh, in the uh, you know, the Fashion Institute Award. At, at that, those days, it was called the Cody, uh -huh. the Cody Award. And uh, he received it for his special uh, whatever. And uh, I, I received it for the Zion here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we became, uh, you know, acquainted. Uh, I didn't know him uh, as a close, close friend, but uh, professionally, and he, he was very uh, he was very fond of me. And mm -hmm. also, uh, um, he was uh, always said, said the, the best things about me, which was very nice because he was a rather serving uh, person. He, yeah. he didn't like too many people in the industry. <laughs> Did you? Through the years, uh, he, uh, on one occasion, he would write me letters and so forth. Oh, that's nice. Right. Do you have his same kind of uh, obsession over the perfection of garments like a sleeve? Well, and they say, they <laughs> say that I'm. Uh, particular, <laughs> yes, I am. I, you know, I'm not devoted to what I do. Uh -huh. I'm particular, meticulous about uh, what we produce. Uh, that's one reason why you know, I really haven't expanded. I, I didn't want a big business. I wanted mm -hmm. a small, precise, elegant kind of uh, business where mm -hmm. uh, I could control everything. Uh, if you're going to do, uh, you know, the tour quality clothes, you, uh, you just can't be all over the lot. I mean, we're talking you know, couture quality and, and ready to wear, which I'm ready to wear. Um, mm. Well, it shows. I was looking over some of some photos of your garments that I have in a file over the years, and they're just absolutely most beautiful clothing. <laughs> and, you know, they're not. I look at things from the early, from the '80s, from the '90s, and they all they don't look, you know, out of date or anything. They're just they should be. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, have good lines. Uh, they transcend uh, uh, the the ins and outs of fashion. I mean, uh, you know, quality and uh, tasteful design. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what's going on, I mean, you know, we try to be hip also uh, in yeah. a certain way. But I mean, I I'm not uh, I'm not the uh, populist designer or I'm right. not the uh, like the uh, the carrot on a carrot uh, right. that sort of thing. And the Calvin Klein, which is catering more to a overall public mm -hmm. uh, well I absolutely see you in the same you know in the tradition of Vionnet, Balenciaga and Charles James just making well, that's wonderful cuts basically where we are yeah. Uh -huh. yeah 
Who produces your, your fabrics that you like to work with the most? Well, uh, you know, I, I, I buy all of my fabrics from Europe, Italy, France, uh, Switzerland, uh, wherever the, the, the uh, people who really work with the couture houses in uh, France, we use the same fabrics. Um, I go to the store. Uh, just, you certain look of certain style that, that appeals to me and uh, I work with them closely, mm -hmm. such as Abraham, uh, probably the most uh, largest supplier of these salons in the couture and mm -hmm. also he does the new salons ready to wear too, which is a different category, but they're very, very He's surrounded by art and quality, and it, and it projects in his fabric also. Mm -hmm. And your garments are made in Los Angeles? Yeah, we do everything in my own, uh, my own workers here. Mm -hmm. How many people do you have in your well, production? We have 60, 60 employees. Uh -huh. And I also, I read somewhere that you have trained people from all over the world, that your tailors are from Italy? Well, they're from everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, we're, uh, we, we're always looking for, for good good quality workers, uh, the tailors are and from every Argent, uh, we have Argentinians, we have Italians, we have uh, Russians, uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're rare getting uh, the, the old world kind, uh, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, do it sort of a custom operation, because everything is done a little differently here than, than other places. It's not a standardized production system here. Mm -hmm. As far as the uh, the needle needle workers, you know, they're basically once certain stitching is on on done on the boom, it's mostly all hand finished. Why everything's hand finished? So it, you you need people who are you know good with the needle and to, to do uh, uh, very specialized kind of sewing. Mm -hmm. Um, Charles James did that as well, didn't he? Didn't he get a lot of uh, his work from... Well, James was a really good mature house. Uh -huh. He did a few, he did a ready-to-work collection for a while back in the uh, 60s, I believe. Mm -hmm. But he always had problems with the uh, manufacturers, and he was always, uh, unfortunately, suing everybody, <laughs> if you know his history. Uh, but uh, uh, he still made, uh, you know, had his small operation, but actually uh, he was more or less supported by a handful of very, very wealthy and very important women, you know, like uh. Hearst and the, uh, uh, Wilson Rogers, if you've read his history, people of that caliber who mm -hmm. really supported him and put money to his business, and uh, he, he just went through all kinds of fortunes, including his wife's, you know, whatever her fortune was. Yeah, well, that's how you look, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, well, finally, as you look back on your, what is it, are you going on your 45th year or your 46th year in business? Uh, yeah, I'll be incorporated in 1950 or 51, so I think we're 45. 45. What is uh, one of your fondest memories? I guess that's kind of a difficult question. But... Well, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> Just being, being acknowledged in my early career is, uh, was a satisfaction. Uh, and to come out to have come out to uh, Los Angeles instead of New York, where after my, uh, my uh, I was brought up back east, and to show the uh, the, the Easterners that you know you could make it in Los Angeles, which they considered obviously the backcountry in the fashion world, and. Uh, 
when people would acquaint me, and I, you know, within three years, I won all the awards for the industry. I had to get it, plus mm-hmm. the Neiman Marcus, plus the Cody, plus the second Cody, and the Hall of Fame and all that, uh, if you want to put that sort of thing in there. Uh, people stopped and looked, and then uh, all of a sudden, everybody was knocking on the door. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not where you are. It's, uh, if you have something to offer, and if it's something special, people will come. No matter where you are, they always say, even if you're in a little alley that nobody knows, if somebody discovers you and they see something that is a, is a special interest or unusual, uh, it'll be sought out. Mm-hmm. Well, I wish more designers would follow your your example. <laughs> well, which one has to do is saying that... Uh, you know, I, intuitively, I just did what I had to do. I had uh-huh. it my own way. I, you know, I knew nothing about business or the uh, business end of it. Uh, also, I had to learn and develop, uh, learn how to produce, and to make uh, clothes, uh, all that sort of thing. It took uh, all my ingenuity. And, uh, still do today. You know, I, I still, every time I make a collection, I feel like I'm just starting all over again. Mm-hmm. I never rely on what I did the last season or, uh, or what's happened to me. I mean, uh, I always feel that I've got more to learn. And, uh, now I get cold feet. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how many, do you have emails so I can send you uh, a copy of this article when it's finished? Yeah, I'll just hear it my bank tree. Oh, okay. 2254 cells from all of us. Okay. You know, just go. Okay. All right, great. All right. Thank you. Thank it was you. a pleasure speaking with you. Okay.